Hello and welcome to Concrete Construction Methods. This is presentation number one, What is Concrete? Foundations, formwork, reinforcement, fresh concrete testing are all just a small sample of the items that we'll be covering in our course. We'll also be covering aggregates, admixtures, and materials. However, before we get to that, we have to first determine what is concrete. This may sound simple, but many people confuse concrete with other products. In its most basic form, concrete is a combination of both paste and aggregates. Cement and water make up the paste, while stone and sand make up the aggregates. Of course, nowadays you would be pretty hard pressed to find a concrete mixture with just those four basic ingredients in it. Most concrete mixtures will have at least one chemical admixture. Chemical admixtures are used in concrete to do everything from reducing the water in the concrete to increasing the flow of the concrete. There are admixtures to fight corrosion and there are admixtures to reduce shrinkage. You may also find a supplemental cementitious material such as slag, fly ash, or metacalin. You may also find fibers in concrete. Fibers are used to reduce the amount of plastic shrinkage cracking in concrete. Plastic shrinkage cracking is cracking that occurs on the surface of concrete within the first two to eight hours of set. Let's now take a look at some typical concrete proportions. Here we have four mixes. Mixes one and two have entrapped air, while mixes three and four have entrained air. We'll talk about what those are in a minute. What I'd like you to notice though, is that mixes one and three would be considered rich mixes due to the heavy cement content, while mixes two and four would be considered lean mixes because of the lower cement content. But what I'd like you to notice is that as the cement content goes up, the aggregate goes down. That is because concrete is designed and sold by volume. However, in both cases, the aggregates are still the majority of the mix. Most concrete mixtures have 60 to 75% aggregate. Also note that these mixes are separated by entrapped air and entrained air. In this case, the entrapped air are the mixes with 2% air, while the entrained air mixes are those with 6%. Entrained air is air that we put into the concrete intentionally to fight the deteriorating effects of freezing and thawing. Entrapped air is produced in the mixing process naturally, but has no beneficial properties to the concrete. Since the majority of our concrete is going to be aggregates, let's take a moment and look at two different types of aggregates. Here we see two sections of concrete. The one on the left is round river gravel, while the one on the right is crushed limestone. Though the quality of your concrete is typically going to come down to two things, and that is the quality of your paste and the quality of your aggregates, your selection of aggregates is going to come down to one thing, and that is availability. Now, though these are two different types of aggregates, we can see that both are quality concrete. We can see this because these sections of concrete have been cut and polished. Here we can see that the paste has filled in the voids in between the aggregates and have bound those aggregates together. So here we're going to get improved compressive strengths from our concrete. We're going to get improved permeability as well as better resistance to weathering. And finally, we will lessen the effects of long-term drying shrinkage. However, one of the best ways to improve the quality of your concrete 
is by decreasing the amount of water in the concrete. A decrease in your water cement ratio will give you a stronger concrete both in flexural and compressive strength. It improves the water tightness. It also improves the overall durability of the concrete and it improves the use of available cements within the concrete mixture. This chart shows cylindrical specimens with a constant cement content but varying water cement ratios. As you can see, the overall volume of the cylinder increases with the increase in water cement ratio. So does this mean if we add water to a concrete mix that ultimately a customer would get more concrete? The answer is yes. If we don't adjust our proportions, we will increase the yield of the batch and decrease the effect of the cement within the concrete mixture. Here's the problem. Many people, either through lack of knowledge or lack of concern, want to add water to concrete. They feel that this makes the concrete flow out of the truck faster and flow into place quicker. However, there are many detrimental effects to adding water to concrete. For starters, your crew is going to be waiting around a much longer period of time for that concrete to reach a point where it can finally be finished. Also, once this concrete is put into serviceability, the durability is going to be greatly decreased and the strength is going to be lowered. There are much better ways to increase the workability of concrete without adding water. You could start with optimally graded aggregates. If that doesn't work, try a water reducer. There are many on the market. There's basic water reducers, mid-range water reducers, and super plasticizers, often referred to as super P. When we do pour concrete, we want the concrete to be in what's called the plastic state. The plastic state means that the concrete is fresh, but it's not segregating. If the concrete begins to segregate, then it's just wet. We don't want that. Instead, what we want is for the concrete to be movable. In other words, we can vibrate it, we can get it into the mold, and it'll take the shape of the mold. This is not to say that we don't have high flow concrete that is of a quality nature. We do, and it happens all the time. However, it is done using design modifications, not by adding water. Once our concrete has been placed, we may witness what is referred to as bleeding. Bleeding is the formation of a thin layer of water on top of the concrete. This is the combination of two things. First, the heavier particles within our mixture, namely the cement particles and the aggregates, are beginning to settle while the water begins to upwardly migrate. But this is not going to have a detrimental effect to the overall performance of our concrete as long as it has been mixed, placed, and finished properly. Also, we want to make sure that we properly cure the concrete. Now, we cannot have proper placement unless we have proper consolidation. Consolidation can take place via a vibrator internally or externally. It can also be done by mechanical means, and on small jobs, it can be done by hand. What vibration does and what consolidation does is reduces the friction between the particles, making the concrete a more liquid, flowable material so that it can take the shape of the mold in which we've put the concrete. Also mentioned a couple of slides ago is the practice of curing concrete. Curing concrete is the practice of maintaining a proper temperature and moisture content of our freshly mixed concrete. This allows the concrete to achieve its desired properties. When cement and water are mixed, a chemical process called hydration takes place. The extent to which this process is completed will greatly influence the strength and durability of our concrete. In other words, if for any reason the hydration process is stopped, poor temperature, poor moisture content of our concrete, 
then the development of the strength and durability of the concrete will cease as well. However, the opposite is also true. Here we see compressive strength results on four cylinders from the same batch that were tested at 56 days. The only difference was the curing. The cylinder with no curing broke below the specified 4,000 PSI. The cylinder with seven day curing just made it to the 4,000 PSI, while the cylinder that was cured for 28 days and the cylinder that was cured for 56 days exceeded the 4,000 PSI specification by 400 and 1,000 PSI respectively. In fact, our concrete can continue to gain strength throughout its service life as long as some factors are present. First, there must be some unhydrated cement within the concrete. Also, the relative humidity must be above 80%. We must also have favorable concrete temperatures, and finally, we must have sufficient space for hydration products to expand. Since cement plays such a key role in our concrete, in fact, without the cement we wouldn't have concrete, let's take a moment and talk about what cement is. Cement is not a single chemical compound. It is, in fact, many chemical compounds. However, 90% of cement by weight is made up by these four compounds. Tricalcium silicate, dicalcium silicate, tricalcium aluminate, and tetracalcium aluminoferrite. Now you may have heard of different types of cement, type 1, type 2, 3, 4, and 5, and sometimes you'll hear of type 1, 2, so on. However, all of these cements will have these four major compounds in it, however, they will just be altering the percentages of each. And now, as we wrap up this introduction to concrete, I would like to say one thing about hardened concrete. Up until now, we've talked about fresh concrete or plastic concrete. But hardened concrete is usually measured by compressive strength. It's reported in pounds per square inch here in the US and is typically specified at 28 days. Now, this is not to say that concrete strength is the end all be all of our hardened concrete. There are many other issues that we should be concerned about specifically in the field of durability. There's crack control, freezing and thawing, alkali aggregate activity, and sulfate attack, all of which can take place after our concrete has been placed. And if you'd like more information on these subjects, I suggest you visit cement.org, which is the website for the Portland Cement Association. However, moving forward in our program, I would like you to keep a couple of things in mind. These are key numbers that are going to be relevant throughout our class. Starting with one bag of cement weighs 94 pounds. The specific gravity of water is 1. One gallon of water weighs 8.33 pounds. And finally, there are 27 cubic feet in a cubic yard. And this concludes presentation number one, What is Concrete?